The story of the Gita is the story of Indian civilization itself. We know the Gita as Krishna's counsel to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. But was it Krishna who created it? Or was it poet Vedvyas who was speaking the truth of the universe through Krishna? Does Sanjaya, who told blind king Dhritarashtra all that he saw happening in a faraway battlefield, deserve any less credit? What about all the poets and philosophers who sang, recited, wrote down or translated the Gita for people like us? This is their story, the story of the Gita. Right before the final confrontation between the Pandavas and the Kauravas, Krishna, who is the universe personified, rescues Arjuna from paralyzing doubt by giving him the essence of Vedic thought, the Bhagavad Gita. Vyas told the story of the Mahabharat to his disciple Vaishampayan, who told it to Roma Harshan, who told it to Sauti, who told it to Shonaka in the Naimish forest. 4,000 years ago, the rishis of Aryavarta composed the Rig Veda. In it, they praised the sun, the moon and the planets. They paid homage to the forces that hold the universe together. In the centuries that followed, the Yajur Veda spoke of rituals with which mortals might call upon the gods and praise them. After that, the Upanishads shifted the focus from the celestial to the human. Brahman, that which unites all beings, the song that vibrates and flows through all that exists, is shown to be a universal mind. Over centuries, after much debate and disagreement between monks, the Vedanta came to the people at last. The Puranas and the Ramayana and the Mahabharata were written down in Brahmi script for the first time ever. When religions of the book arrived in the subcontinent for the first time, Vedic ideas began to be retold in regional languages and scripts. Through songs and stories, Vedic ideas reached the masses. The Gita had found a new home, the Indian mind. When the Europeans made their first attempts to understand Indian culture, the many customs and beliefs of the Hindus made little sense to them. So they decided that Hindus must have one book that is the source of all their beliefs. What the European scholars did not understand was that Vedic ideas could exist without being holy books. They did not understand the importance of songs, stories and rituals that travel the land, spreading the essence of Vedic thought. Also, the Bhagavad Gita is not the only Gita. The Puranas speak of the Guru Gita, Ganesh Gita, Avadhuta Gita, Ram Gita, Uddhav Gita, Vyadha Gita and the Anu Gita. Around the time when the Roman Empire was rising in the Mediterranean, the Mahabharata was being written down in India. In a few centuries, it went from being a short tale called Jaya to being a mighty epic of 100,000 verses. And at its heart, there was the Bhagavad Gita, a book that has been called God's gift to Arjuna. Philosopher Adi Shankara saw in Gita the oneness of divinity and humanity. Ramanuj and Madhav found in the Gita the difference between the human and the divine. In the 20th century, Mohandas Gandhi, Lokmanya Tilak and Bhim Rao Ambedkar all found different meanings in the Gita. Across the seas, Huxley, Oppenheimer and even Hitler found their hearts reflected in the Gita. There are as many avatars of the Gita as there are minds that it has touched. While it has lived for long and meant many things to many people, the Gita's message remains as simple as it was when the Rishis first contemplated the Vedas.